everybody, this is Dylan. And this is Reese. You come to our channel for fast, easy, healthy meals to take all the complexity out of your plant-based diet. Today we are showing you a what I eat in a day video with three super simple meals. Don't require a bunch of steps and prep and all this crazy stuff. Just get it done, get eaten, get out of the kitchen and back to your life. How does that sound? That sounds good to me because I'm hungry. Let's get right to it. We're making a very simple chickpea omelet. It's chickpea because of the flour. This one actually says garbanzo fava flour, whatever. It's all the same, it doesn't matter. I don't know why they mixed in some fava bean flour. They probably just needed to get rid of it. A bean is a bean. We're only gonna make about enough for a couple omelets, not a big batch or anything. Last time I made this, it was for dinner. Do you remember you were like half asleep and I walked into the bedroom with chickpea omelets? Yeah, you didn't know what to make. You had a bunch of random veggies in the fridge and came in with those and I was like, make this more often. This is perfect for having random veggies in the fridge. You can make this differently every time. It does not have to be the same. These are my go-to. I got a little bell pepper one green onion, a tomato, and I've got a few mushrooms and some spinach. That's what we're gonna do. Let's chop up some veggies and throw it in the bowl, and then we'll put it together into an omelet. I'm gonna let you chop those veggies, and I'm just gonna do a montage. I'm gonna let us do that. Let's get to the chopping. Kill ya. <laughs> Hell yeah, we are chopped. Veggies are ready, let's set them aside. We don't need them right now. Let's make our omelette base. I've got a cup of the chickpea flour, throw it in a bowl, we're gonna whisk together a few things here. How about a little smoky paprika? Whatever, just, I don't know, half a teaspoon. It's the Dylan way of measuring. A teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon then of garlic powder. You but can Dylan, use minced garlic if you want. How can they get this recipe? Reeves has all these recipes down below in the description box of this video in a blog post. A little black pepper grind it in. I like turmeric because it gives it a little color. I will measure on this. That's pretty good. It's kind of like putting turmeric in a tofu scramble. It just gives it that color. Definitely. Black salt. If you want an eggy kind of flavor, but it has a sulfury kind of flavor, which is reminiscent of eggs, if you miss that sort of thing. It doesn't, it's also salty. After all, it is salt. Put a pinch in and test it out and see if it's something you like. So many people say they don't miss those flavors anymore. That's good. I, I don't think uh, it would be weird if you did. Here's a teaspoon of baking powder. Throwing that in, that'll give them a little rise on the griddle here. Now, nooch, we need like a third of a cup of nooch. Here's about a quarter, and that makes roughly a third, close enough. If you haven't tried our non-fortified nutritional yeast, it's the best price out there and the best flavor too. Not fortified with any of the fake synthetic stuff. It's very delicious, and a vegan company. Just whisk it all together so it's nice and whiskey. Whiskey business. <laughs> Wow, why is it so specific? A cup plus a couple tablespoons, because a cup wasn't enough and I wasn't gonna write 1.08 cup. So I'll just overflow my cup and then that should be good. It doesn't have to be that exact, but you don't want it to be so runny that it doesn't become omelette and you don't want it to be so thick that it just like doesn't work well. So let's see what happens with the cup. Check out that consistency. It's thick, but not like paste. Rinse your whisk right now so it doesn't get all sticky. Now that would be whiskey business. So now you can either pour the omelet onto the griddle, sprinkle the veggies on top, or you can mix it together. I think I remember liking it mixed together in advance. I guess the veggies kind of cook into the omelet better on both sides instead of only on one side. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that could be in my head. Let's throw the veggies in. Let's start with like a big handful like that. Give it a stir and see like when it seems like too much veg. <laughs> We're not there yet. I'm doing it all. Do it. I might want this a little looser. Looking nice. You can still stir it it real easily. It's not like too, too thick. Whoa, that's a big one. And then just kind of smooth it all out. I didn't know you were gonna make them so big. I mean, we did use a fair amount of edge. Easier oh. to make two big ones than a bunch of little tiny guys. I suppose that's true. It, it might be a little harder to flip it if it's too big. Give it some time, let it finish steaming, and we'll check on them in a little bit. I used black pepper, but you could have used the crushed red pepper for a little heat. I'm already regretting it. I feel like we should have added that heat. You got sriracha. Ooh, that's what we're putting on top. Let's just see how it's yeah. doing. It can't, can't possibly be ready. Oh wow, it's way more ready than I was expecting. It's only been a couple of minutes, and that underside is looking nice. Should we just flip it and see what happens? Is it too soon? Do you need two spatulas? We might. As you can see, the, the non-stickiness of this griddle is highly effective. You can see this thing is not stuck at all. It did indeed non-stick. Here we go. Whoa! Ooh, looking nice. It's a savory pancake. Here we go. Oh, that's too easy. 
That is too easy. Looking good. I'm pretty proud of these omelets. Wow. Wow, the cordon bleu. Here you come. The cordon bleu. Sign me up, boy. I need all the training I can get. Those guys eat funny. I think Luca will love this too. Now, I think if you want the inside cooked, you are going to have to leave this thing for a good few minutes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your veggies might be a little on the crunchy side. Now, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could like put your veggies over here on the griddle first and let them sort of pre-cook and soften a little bit. Then you could throw them back in the bowl to mix everything everything up and back on the griddle. That's just if you want your veggies to be a little bit more done. There are fast, innovative ways to get just the right texture that you like. I'm just dreaming with you. I did a little longer on the second side. I could flip again to crisp up the first side again, maybe. I'm eager to cut into this and see how done it is. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. What? If it's underdone and you eat it, you're not getting salmonella. <laughs> you sure are not. Check this out. It looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see that, but it's looking pretty good. It's not like dried out like whole wheat flour would be. Mm -hmm. The green peppers are still a little bit crunchy. I love it. The flavor is so good. Mm. I'm gonna let you have the first omelet. You can Here eat it that is. off a plate or yeah. just right in the cup. I think I want to taste it just like this. It's very handheldable. That's easy. It is hot. Sriracha, nice and colorful. We've got our mushrooms, bell pepper, some tomato, spinach. This See, is a healthy treat. <sighs> that's why you mix the veggies in. You get a veggie in every bite. I'm definitely a supporter of mix the veggies in. So I thought this was gonna make two smaller omelets, but we ended up making quite a sizable couple of omelets indeed, eh, Reebs? And you know what? This chickpea flour omelet, it's really filling. I could probably just eat half of it and maybe have like a little fruit or steamed vegetable on the side and save the rest for a snack during the day. Don't expect the insides to be like totally dried out. There's a little bit of moistness, which you like. It's good. You don't want to totally dry. This is the best way to cook it, right on this griddle. You saw how non-stick this truly is. Chili lime. Whoa. Well, your world chili lime. Heck yeah. There. That's my breakfast plate. What do you think? It looks beautiful. I can pretend to be refined and eat with a fork and knife, but why? This is a finger food breakfast. I agree. That's good. How are the veggies for you? Are they al dente? They're perfect. I'm gonna try this chili lime. See if my watermelon's good. That's the winner. Wow, how did you know? I didn't even bang on it. I just hoped. Awesome breakfast. Well, I'm sure glad you liked it, Reebs, and we'll see you at lunch. Hello, folks. Welcome to lunch. We are making hamburger lists helper today. Reebs, I think you kind of came up with this recipe and it is a good one. But we got to cook some lentils and some pasta because I didn't have any lentils ready in the fridge. You could use canned lentils for this. We're using two cups measured already cooked. So I just put in one cup of lentils. I think that's probably going to be around two cups of lentils. We'll find out. Yeah, but Dill, tell them how it's different from the last video. Yes, we made this and we cooked the lentils in the tomato-y mixture and that stopped the lentils from cooking because it's quite acidic. And acid it stops things from cooking. You don't want to cook your lentils in the sauce. So we've revamped this recipe. Now we're cooking the lentils separately and we're putting it all together after it's cooked. Save some time for your weekly lunches. Have the lentils ready in the fridge. You don't have to have a whole entire recipe ready in the fridge, but you could have some of your ingredients like lentils, quinoa, brown rice, your potatoes already in the fridge. Saves time and energy. Here's the pasta. We're using the chickpea rotini. I love the Barilla brand. It is the best brand for gluten-free pasta in my opinion that doesn't all just like cook and then fall apart into nothing. We're a Barilla family. Yeah. Buddy. Buddy. We'll put this all together in a few minutes. This one is a completely chop free recipe. No chop, just a few simple ingredients, your lentils, your pasta. This one is cheap. Well, you know why, Dill? I invented this one during the pandemic quarantine, so it had to be a pantry meal. Yeah, we had a lot of no chop meals during that time. You can't beat that. Let's put this baby together. All it is now is mix things into a pot. A cup of soy milk, any plant milk will do. A cup of water or veggie stock if you want. You know what else you got there? What do I got? Cool plaque. This one? You like that? Yeah. Huh. A can of diced tomatoes. No salt added. Try to find the no salt added. It can get salty otherwise. Then I'm going to use about a half of a six ounce can of tomato paste. Dill, did you ever eat Hamburger Helper growing up? I never ate Hamburger Helper until college, actually, when I was eating on the cheap. And uh, that stuff can be cheap, but it is not healthy. And this is cheap and healthy. So this is obviously ideal. Let's throw some things in. I got a couple teaspoons worth of onion powder. We 
got some garlic powder going in. Oh, now it's really smelling good. Some dried oregano. It whisking, keep it whisking, keep it whisking. The oregano is a very important one if you're trying to mimic Hamburger Helper. I, I don't know why, but they must have used oregano in all of them. Smoky paprika. Doesn't have to be smoky, but whatever. Nooch. We need a good amount of nutritional yeast. Oh yeah, get that in there. That's that well your world, Nooch. There's some mustard seed powder. If you don't have mustard seed powder, you could just use mustard. I like it a little spicy, so we'll throw in just a little bit of crushed red pepper. But if you don't like spice, don't add the spice. Yeah, it's really easy like that. I will say we do have a surprising number of people who see the crushed red pepper, know they can't handle the heat, but since it's in the recipe, they do it anyway. And I'm like, you gotta know when to not include the things that don't work with you. So don't put in the crushed red pepper if you don't like it. Pepper responsibly, you know? This is essentially just our base, right? Mm -hmm. Hamburger list, helper list base. This was an eight ounce box of pasta. Maybe we won't add it all just to make sure that we've got it saucy. Reeves likes things saucy. There's one. That's two and a little bit, throw it in. Let's get to stirring and we'll see if we want to add in the rest of that pasta. Oh, oh that's looking, looking nice. It's nice and saucy. Everything's hot, cooked, ready to go. We simmered that sauce for just a minute or two, just enough to get all the flavors going. We're gonna throw in the rest of that pasta. You're wild. I am wild. What broke college kid can't make this either, honestly? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're not busy too. Hey, I know in college I made a lot of pasta, so that's no problem. The lentils, if you can't cook lentils, I mean, if you can cook pasta, you can cook lentils. But you can get the canned lentils. Uh, no salt added too is definitely possible. One thing I to do with hamburger helper back in college is I would also put in a can of mixed veggies or the frozen mixed veggies and that would add a little veg vegetation to the dish. You could do that now. That's why I brought it up. I didn't. This is just going to be all starchy and potatoes and flavor. Why but not? you could definitely throw in some veg. Why not serve it over like a bed of steamed broccoli? Must mm. be hankering steamed broccoli because I keep asking for it. Well, we should have some for dinner then, shouldn't we? Yeah. Let's have a broccoli dish for dinner. Let's get to the eating here. It's gonna be hot, Reebs. I'ma let you have the first bite. I'ma let? I, that was breakfast. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Nice and creamy. We didn't even use nuts. We used soy milk. Play with this base idea and take it to the moon and back. Any which direction you want. Now, if you use the good chickpea noodles like we did, these ones don't really fall apart. So you could put this on low, cover it, and it's not gonna turn into total mush. So hearty. Oh, I love the lentils and the pasta together. That Nucci flavor and the tomato. You can cook this like a casserole too. Oh, you can. You could take this just like that, put it in a little Pyrex, sprinkle on some breadcrumbs if you want to, and then throw it uncovered in the oven for, you know, 20 minutes until you get the, the texture that you like. Mmm, you better taste this. That is one nostalgic smell. It's crazy how real it smells. There is some Hearty, delicious comfort food. This dish is all over the Well Your World Facebook group. Then every once in a while, someone will say, you know what, I didn't really care for it. I question that person's taste buds. Um, somebody's gonna say that to any recipe we make ever, you know. Yes, join us in the Well Your World Facebook group. We have an awesome community there. Almost 30,000 people hanging out, putting up pictures of their food. That's where you're gonna see people put their own variations and spins on things, which I absolutely love. I'm glad you love it. We're gonna eat lunch and we'll be back for dinner. It is dinner time, and guess what Reeves wants? More pasta. Well, I wanted broccoli, but we haven't had this recipe in a while. We don't always eat pasta two times in one day. Sometimes, actually, I eat it all day because I'll make one big pot of something that has pasta and eat it all day long. And this is red lentil pasta. We made the chickpea pasta at lunch. Well, we're really changing it up. Red lentil pasta. <laughs> are carbs bad for you? No, carbs are not bad for you. Carbs are the primary fuel of the human body. You should be eating carbs. You should always be carbo loaded. The difference though is that it should be healthy carbs. Not all the garbage and white pasta, for example, that so many people eat. You want to eat the healthy whole food stuff. The red lentil stuff is really good. Whole wheat pasta is really good, but the white pasta, not so much. There's not a lot of good in that, except there's a bunch of calories. This Ooh. is going to be our creamy pesto pasta. Nice. Pestasta. All right, we do have a little chopping to do. It's just a little broccoli and an onion. It's not like the greens are just the broccoli. We got the spinach. We got the herbs. It's going to be a good one. 
I've got one yellow onion. I've got a cold pan here. You can preheat your pan if you think you're fancy or whatever and you wanna have it all ready. I'm not gonna fight you. One good thing to do is to get everything out so you've got it all ready and then put things away as you go. If you're not the cook in the house, you should be the prepper and the washer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> We're gonna be blending this so you don't need to chop this onion very well. Just chop it enough to be able to saute it. I've got these beautiful broccoli stems. I'm gonna use some broccoli, blend it up in the sauce, but we're gonna save probably this much for what we're gonna put on top of the pasta. And we'll use these stems in our sauce, okay? Again, roughly chop this up. Maybe the stems we chop a little bit smaller because we want them to cook and soften. Nice, it's a zero waste recipe. So let's go to the stove and start a saute. This is so much easier than any other scratch cooking like in standard America land. It's so easy, we just, we chop for like two minutes. I'm gonna use a little bit of veggie stock to add a little more flavor as we go here just to keep things from sticking and burning. Try to find some low sodium or no sodium veggie stock. That just adds a little more flavor than say doing it with water. Water works great too though. Why no oil? Because you don't need it. Oil just adds a ton of fat, which makes weight loss really challenging, clogs your arteries, especially if you're trying to get to a healthy weight. Easiest way to lose weight is to cut out the fat and eat healthy, whole starches like we eat on every recipe on this channel pretty much. Let's throw in some garlic. Oil adds a lot of richness to things, so when you take it out for health reasons, you gotta add a lot of other flavor. Garlic, onion are great for that, the pepper. You just have to amp up your herbs and spices to get lots of flavor out of the food. For people that are new to this diet, the thing that blows their mind is, oh, I didn't know you could add so much without it tasting funny. Mm. So what you gotta do when you're taking out all the really rich stuff like the oil, excess salt, American eating has a lot of salt that you don't want. Elevate your blood pressure. You wanna get to a point where you can survive and live healthy without the need for a bunch of meds, like cholesterol and blood pressure meds, the two most prevalent in the USA. We're just gonna give that a few minutes to saute. Our pasta's going, our sauce is going, let's prep our steamy broccoli and get all that in there too. You don't wanna bite into this big monster piece, so just cut things so that they're bite size, and we'll throw it right into this steamer. There we go, a nice big steamer basket of broccoli. What do you think of that? Yes, I've been asking for that all day. Mm -hmm. Keep adding a little bit of veggie stock as you need it. When things start to dry out, let's get this going. We only have a few minutes left left on our pasta. Our sauce is only gonna take a minute to blend up real quick. So we'll steam our broccoli and everything's gonna come out at the same time. Wow. So easy. It's like you're good at recipes or something. Not though. really, just normal. And you can be too. <laughs> not, not you, Reeves, but everybody else. These veggies are nice and soft. Let's just dump them into the blender. I'm gonna throw in a couple more tablespoons or so of nutritional yeast. It just adds such a good flavor, especially to these creamy dishes. I've got a whole cup's worth of basil leaves. That, call that a cup, like a nice big hand. Handful. This is a whole bunch of parsley that I just rinsed. I didn't intend to use the whole thing, of course, but like that much. We're probably gonna throw in a good couple of handful. That's those are that's a lot. A little more. That's plenty. This is gonna be a nice green sauce. You know what I mean? Lemon. You can't have a pesto without lemon. At least one lemon, maybe two. Squeeze in the lemon. We're gonna use soy milk because we want this to be creamy. Remember, I didn't put any nuts in this. If you want it to be a little richer, add some fat. Add some cashews. Raw cashews are really good for making it nice and creamy. So try that out. I didn't do it this time, but it's usually oil and pine nuts. Pine nuts are a big pesto ingredient. Um, I've done it with walnuts, that's really good. But pine nuts are really expensive, so some people try to avoid those. Um, we're doing it without the nuts altogether today. And you tell me what you think and if it needs more lemon. Do you mm -hmm. like it? Yeah, what do you think? Would you put more lemon? I it would. wouldn't hurt. I would put more lemon. It doesn't have a strong lemony taste. The flavor is really good. So I'm gonna add some more. And I bet you'll like it because you love lemon juice. Okay, one more little spin. <laughs> Our pasta is ready. I'm sure our broccoli is ready too. Let's just strain this pasta out. We got our broccoli ready to go. You can just serve it sauce, pasta, broccoli, build your own bowl, or you can just go ahead and start adding sauce. You don't even have to add all of it. I like to add a little sauce after I make pasta just to keep it from all sticking together. And now you could probably just go ahead and do a build your own and add more sauce on top. All right, let's make you a bowl of pasta. Your second for the day. Serve this to a kid and call it like the incredible Hulk meal. <laughs> and then boom, this is green on green. There you have it. A beautiful broccoli pesto. What did that take? 10 minutes to make? You could do a little pine nuts on top. You sure could. You ready for a taste? Mm -hmm. Endless pasta build. Amazing. We got to make that shirt. Wow. That is one fresh and amazing sauce. This is good hot or cold, this dish, by the way. Mm-hmm. 
Leftovers are just gonna get even that much better once everything marinates in the fridge. Oh man, perfect for summer. And so fast and easy. People think pasta has to be complicated. It doesn't. I forgot that we have some of our cashew parmesan leftover. This is so good. We didn't show you how to make this today, but all it is is our Well Your World nutritional yeast blended up with raw cashews. Ooh, this yeah. adds a nice rich flavor too. Just sprinkle it on top. Now you got a little bit of added fat, healthy version of fat, not a bunch of concentrated oil. A little crushed red pepper too. We need a little more heat. Let's have a try now that I've souped it up a little bit. <laughs> So simple and rich. I love this. Steamed broccoli is the best. This is an excellent dish. You gotta make this one, y'all. There you have it, three super simple meals. This is how we really eat in a day. You had the omelet, the pasta, and the pasta. Endless pasta abilities. Put these ones on the pantry door and put them in your rotation. All the recipes are down below, so check those out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.